Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining our Pattern to Profit webinar. Uh, today, we are going to feature uh, one of the most innovative electrical appliance, appliances company, Dyson. Uh, we're going to do a case study on its, uh, some of its iconic products. Short introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Lok. Uh, I am the uh, principal, uh, I'm a director of Pintas IP Group. Uh, I've been active as a patent agent for the past 20 years. Uh, and uh, I'm involved heavily in the protection and also the monetization of IP rights uh, in this region. Okay, so uh, today uh, in this one hour, uh, we're going to tell a story, a, re a, a remarkable story of how Dyson has managed to cons creatively disrupt the uh, vacuum cleaner industry and how uh, the company uses patents to uh, establish a successful electrical appliances empire. Uh, apart from the vacuum cleaner, we are going to look at four other iconic products from Dyson. Uh, the the uh, air blades hand dryer, the bladeless fan, the supersonic hair dryer, as well as the uh, air wrap has, uh, hair styler, and how Dyson protected those uh, iconic patterns or iconic products. Okay. Uh, Dyson was founded by Sir James Dyson in England in 1991. Uh, and Dyson is known for manufacturing and designing innovative household appliances like vacuum cleaners, hand, hand dryers, hair dryers, air purifiers, and uh, many other home appliances. Uh, in 2019, Dyson relocated its, its headquarters to Singapore, where it now manages its engineering and manufacturing operations. Okay, uh, when we, uh, before we look at the uh, strategic, the generic strategy of Dyson, uh, I would like to, again, uh, is, uh, refer to the framework proposed by my, uh, fav my favorite uh, management, uh, guru, uh, Professor Potter. Professor Potter has come up with a generic uh, competitive strategy model. And according to him, uh, for business to compete, right, uh, it has to have, uh, it has three strategic options. Uh, a business can choose to be a cost leader, sell things very cheap to everyone, or become a differentiator, uh, uh, meaning to create uniquely desirable uh, products and focus on a certain niche market. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to any company is a firm that is stuck to in the middle, right? A company who tries to be cheap and differentiated at the same time uh, will be in a very poor strategic situation. So what is the uh, generic strategy of uh, Dyson? Uh, Dyson is definitely a differentiator. Uh, Dyson's provide unique, high quality, innovative products at premium prices to high-end market. This is the focus of Dyson. And the inventing genius of Dyson lies in uh, building better machine by not adding things, but by taking things away, by replacing certain component in the conventional product uh, with uh, applied physics with uh, certain known forces of nature. For example, uh, when Dyson introduced the cyclonic uh, vacuum cleaner, it replaces the back of the vacuum, whether of the vacuum cleaner, with using the central petal force of nature to separate the dust from the air. And when it's uh, come up with the hand dryer, uh, it uses air blades. Uh, he, find, he finds a way to produce air blades that force water from your hand 
and replaces paper tower. And when it comes to fan, the traditional fans has blades. And uh, what Dyson has done is it uses the flutes mechanics law to replace the plate, the blades to create, to amplify air. So with all this subtraction, subtraction every time uh, a, a conventional component is subtracted, the new machine comes up with more efficient, more power and created a wow factor uh, to the consumer. So these highly innovative products, the innovation makes Dyson's product highly competitive in the market, even though they are selling at you know, multiple, uh, a very high price, very high premium, but the innovation still managed, managed to sell through the, its innovation. So uh, what is the uh, economic mode of Dyson, right? The concept of economic mode was popularized by uh, Warren Buffett. Uh, uh, Warren Buffett wouldn't invest in any company if any, the company does not have an economic mode. Economic mode is uh, something that allows a company uh, a sustainable competitive advantage for it to make uh, profits for foreseeable future. So the Dyson's economic mode lies in its intangible assets, which are the byproducts of innovation. Uh, the intangible assets uh, includes uh, its patent, its proprietary technology, its brand and valuable IPs. Uh, Today, we are going to see how Dyson relies on patent to protect its innovation to achieve sustainable economic advantage. Okay, so uh, for, for Dyson, uh, uh, its main engine of growth is intellectual property. Uh, and a lot of new ideas uh, invented by uh, Dyson are protected through patents, uh, and, and uh, a lot of uh, very stylish design are protected through industrial design. Uh, a lot of the brand, uh, apart from the Dyson brand, uh, Dyson also have uh, other sub brands like Airwrap, uh, uh, you know, for the air styler, uh, air, styler uh, air multiplier for, for the fans. All these are uh, brands which are trademark, uh, protected by trademarks and a lot of its marketing contents are all protected by copyright. So before we go into the various patterns uh, found and, uh, uh, by, by Dyson, I would like to do a short introduction uh, to the various category of IP rights. Uh, you know, when we talk about IP rights, we talk about a host of legal rights that protects your idea. Uh, you have patterns that protects new uh, technical solution a new invention, copyrights that protects the content, trademarks that protects the brand, registered design that protects the outlook of your product and trade secret that protects your proprietary technology which is not known to the public. All, I, all these legal rights, all these intellectual properties, they are intangible assets. Uh, in fact, if you look at the uh, studies, uh, in year 2020, 90% uh, of the world or the, the Fortune 500 companies in US, the top 500 companies in US, 90% of their value actually comes from the intangible asset. So intangible asset is a very important asset. From, and, uh, uh, and, and all IPs, uh, why do you need IP? IP gives you a monopolistic right to make, to sell, or to use the patented uh, or the protected ideas. Uh, today, in Dyson's case study, you will see how Dyson managed to use pattern uh, to monopolize the Cyclone uh, vacuum cleaners market. Uh, uh, we will feature one of the very famous case between Dyson and Hoover and see how pattern was used to protect its market share. And all IPs uh, has a jurisdictional limit, it's a country right and also all IP has a lifespan. Yeah, these are the common characteristic of IPs. And, uh, and at the most basic level, intellectual property is uh, give the owner uh, a barrier to entry. Uh, if you have any new technology, new products, new feature, uh, if you don't have that barrier of entry, 
uh, then a competitor can just come in and take away your ideas and create a competition for you in the market. And with the IP, you also can secure freedom to operate. And in today's case study, you can see how uh, through IP, uh, through patents, uh, Tyson take away freedom to operate for the competitors and can dominate uh, the market for the cyclonic vacuum cleaners. And uh, for patents, uh, there are categories of uh, patentable inventions. Uh, you have uh, articles pattern, machine patterns, process patterns, or composition patterns. Uh, if you look at all these invention, uh, uh, what patterns protect is the combination that forms the product, right? For example, article pattern, uh, you are talking about combining paper and glue for the 3M post-it. So by filing a pattern, this combination you can own by through a pattern. And uh, pattern is basically a game of combination. Patterns enable you to own a combination that you create to solve the technical problem. And today, from Dyson's example, you can see how this combination of uh, forming the vacuum, cyclonic vacuum cleaner is protected by pattern and uh, uh, how Dyson uses the pattern to stop Hoover from copying the combination. So this is something that we will share later. And to be patentable, uh, your combination, your idea has to be new, meaning that combination has not been used before. Inventive, meaning it solves a problem better than the previous combination and useful meaning it is something that you can apply in a real world uh, application. So if you meet these three criteria, you can actually own the combination by filing a pattern. So to, in today's example, we will be looking at the various uh, patterns filed by Dyson and see how Dyson protects this combination through patterns to own that technology and to own the market share. Okay, so we would want to look at some of the numbers behind uh, Dyson's pattern. Uh, Dyson has filed a total of 2,224 patents covering 441 families, right? And uh, of these uh, 2,000 patents, uh, 547 patents are still valid. So uh, one product uh, is probably covered by a few families of patents, right? So if you want to own a product, make it airtight, then you will create a portfolio of patents through a patent families uh, to, to strengthen your legal position. And these are the filing trend of Dyson's over the years. Uh, you can see that uh, its uh, patenting activity peaks in the year 2010. And yet, uh, I think consistently, uh, Dyson is filing patents uh, every from year to year. And pattern is jurisdictional. So uh, this slide shares the countries where Dyson has filed their pattern. Uh, most of the patterns uh, Dyson's uh, would cover in a uh, state in America, followed by its home country, United Kingdom, and all the major markets like Australia, Europe, Japan, and South Korea. Right? So this is the distributions of Dyson's patterns. Okay, so uh, Dyson's patent portfolio uh, covers uh, different technological areas. Uh, most of the patents are filed as design patent uh, covering the outlook of the product. And also Dyson uh, also filed many patents on vacuum cleaners, fan assembly, dryer, and also uh, uh, autonomous vacuum cleaners. So today we'll be looking at some of this pattern and share how these technologies were protected. Okay. So no expect of a new product is safe from copying with a pattern, without a pattern, right? So before launching a new product, Tyson will file uh, worldwide patterns to protect the invention behind the products. So as you can see, uh, a product can, will be covered by a portfolio of patents. Uh, there are more than 100 registered patents for every category of products produced by Dyson. 
uh, inadequate pattern protections means competitors will come along, copy your idea and compete with you on a lower price and there will be no more premium left right? if that is allowed to happen. So, so Dyson is a believer in pattern and it utilizes the pattern system to its full advantage, making it one of the most successful premium electrical companies around. Okay, so uh, in the following slides, we are going to share uh, some of the key patterns behind uh, Dyson's Iconics product. So uh, if you're interested, you can scan the QR and download your handbook today. And uh, so you can read about the claims in more details, but today we are, I'm going to run through some of the patterns with you. So I would like to start right today by looking at the cyclonic vacuum cleaner, uh, the most uh, important patent uh, for Dyson. Uh, the, uh, in 1978, uh, Dyson realized that uh, the traditional back vacuum cleaners has major problems. Uh, they clog easily and they lose suction. So uh, he looked at the uh, tornado, he gained inspiration from the forces of nature and invented the idea of a vacuum cleaner that using cyclone instead of a bag. And if you use cyclone, you will not lose uh, suction. So after 17, 15 years of uh, experimentation, and multiple 5,000 prototype later, uh, he managed to come up with the first uh, dual cyclone vacuum cleaner. So uh, this uh, project started with uh, dissatisfaction with a traditional vacuum cleaner. Uh, traditionally, all vacuum cleaner has back and it has been like that. It has been unchanged for nearly a century. And uh, Dyson was very frustrated. Uh, experiences told him that the conventional back vacuum cleaner fails to produce enough suction to remove dust properly. And not only that, uh, uh, the bags have other problems. Uh, it, it is difficult to fit in. Uh, it can it get dislodged easily, it gets torn easily. And uh, the reduction in the suction power is not due to the volume of dust in the air, but it is due to the fact that the fine dust quickly clogs the pores of the bags and blocks the airflow, and therefore you need to change, you need to clear uh, the bags regularly. So Dyson developed a radical alternative. Take away the bag, replace it with a cyclone. And this inspiration actually came from he observing nature. He sees tornado and how the twisting air, when it goes, when it, when, when it travels, it sucks up everything in the path, right? Uh, and, and this very big cyclone, the, the, the cyclonic uh, uh, power of a tornado was followed uh, uh, in a smaller scale using electrical motor to, to suck up the dirty air uh, into the vacuum cleaner. So as air is sucked into the vacuum cleaner, uh, it enters the bin and it, it starts to spin, right? As you can see the red color airflow, it starts to spin in the cyclone. And during spinning, as dust is uh, heavier or denser than air, the central uh, petal force will force, will fling the dust to the side and settle to the base of the beads. So this is the first separation and the air, but Dyson found that, you know, it is not sufficient. The first separation is not uh, good enough. So uh, the air is then uh, uh, moved through a second chamber uh, through uh, there's a perforated filter, a perforated skirt where the hair and the fluff are removed. And then it, it, it moves into an inner cyclone where the smaller, the smaller particles 
are being separated using a faster uh, cyclonic flow. So this is uh, what the dual cyclone is about. You have two flow and two separation of dust. And uh, they are able to do this uh, through this machine that you can see on screen. And the patent was uh, found in year uh, 1981. It was very early. This patent was found uh, very early in Europe and in a few other countries. And this patent was uh, successfully asserted against Hoover, uh, who tried to copy the idea. And I will go into that into the case a bit later on. So what, what is the combination found by this pattern, right? So as I mentioned earlier, pattern is a combination game. When you found a pattern, you own a combination. And, uh, and if anyone were to copy the combination that you claim in a pattern, they will be infringing your pattern. So you can always refer to the claims to read what is the combination that has been claimed. So the claim of the pattern reads, right? You have cycloning units of higher successive higher efficiency meaning you have two cyclone the second cyclone is higher of higher efficiency than the first cyclone right in series connection so this is uh, two cyclone in in succession the the, the later one is of higher uh, efficiency or spinning than the earlier cyclone and the highest efficiency have a a, a Frusco conical part tapering away from its entry. As you can see, there is a cone. Yeah, so by having this cone shape, you can accelerate the airflow and make it into higher spinning speed. You have a means for generating the airflow, meaning a motor at the bottom to generate the airflow, to draw in the air and then to make it into a cyclonic. And characterizing in that the lower efficiency cyclone, the, the outer cyclone, has a body being cylindrical or a reverse tapper. So it has a cylindrical container. So these are the four combinations that create the dual cyclonic vacuum cleaner. Having two cyclonic, having a cone shape, uh, upper, upper uh, chamber, a cylindrical lower chamber, and a, a, a motor to generate the airflow and uh, this this pattern uh, was protected uh, this technology was protected by Dyson and initially Dyson tried to commercialize the pattern by selling to the traditional vacuum cleaner manufacturer but he was turned away yeah because you know the traditional uh, vacuum cleaner manufacturer have invested heavily in the manufacturing of vacuum bags. So it is a 250 billion pound industry every year. So the traditional vacuum cleaner were not interested because it means this new technology will cannibalize their own vacuum bag uh, business. So they turn him away. So uh, uh, if, initially, even though it was a good technology, James Dyson had problems popularizing this technology. So eventually, uh, uh, James Dyson uh, found his, his luck by finding a, someone in Japan who are willing to license his technology uh, in 1993. That was like more than 10 years later, uh, he managed to license to a Japanese, Japanese manufacturer and uh, the Japanese manufacturer came up with this Ping G Force vacuum cleaner. And with the royalty, the royalties paid, uh, Dyson uh, 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 re has enough money to manufacture the first uh, machine under his own name, which is called the DC01. So the DC01 uh, upright uh, vacuum cleaner is the world's first backless vacuum cleaner. Uh, it has uh, it features a dual cyclone technology uh, that has. Uh, Efficient, which can efficiently pick up uh, dirt uh, without losing suction power, right? So this is the first pattern. And, and Dyson is not an easy thing for Dyson because Dyson at that time was a startup company in the 90s and you have other big players around. And among others, you have Hoover, which is the world leading, which was the world leading uh, vacuum cleaner manufacturer at that time, a big uh, American multinationals. So when he brought this market to the market, uh, the US rival 
found that, oh, this is a good technology. So he copied his, this idea and they guessed wrongly that, you know, Dyson being a startup wouldn't have the resources nor the real power, you know, to sue uh, a, 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 a giant, right? It is a David versus Goliath kind of uh, puzzle. So uh, uh, Hoover thought, okay, never mind. I, 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 I will sell. I will copy. If you have the guts, you come and sue me. And uh, and and uh, the Dyson's uh, dual cyclone was uh, in nineteen ninety nine was so popular. Uh, it has uh, fifty percent of the market share. And Hoover, uh, the incumbent share declined from twenty five percent to ten percent. So Hoover response was to come up with. A cyclonic vacuum cleaner, but it's called triple triple vortex. It has three cyclones instead of two cyclones. So uh, there's a fallacy in the market that you know you just need to change the pattern a little bit, the technology a little bit, you can sell. So this is what I think Hoover thought by just adding in a cyclone, you can bypass the pattern. So uh, I, uh, Hoover developed the product and so to the market and Dyson took action against uh, uh, Hoover. And when it goes to court, right? So what happened is you need to see whether an infringing product infringes the patent or not. You, the, you can determine infringement by looking at all the element claims in the patent. You look at the patent claims, break down the element and see whether the infringing product has all the element claim or not. If the infringing product is found to have all the element claim, there will be literal infringement. Okay. Of course, you have another form of infringement called infringement by doctrine of equivalent. But here we just focus on literal infringement. So in this case, you, you a side by side comparison was done, right? So you look at the claims of Dyson's patent. It reads is a vacuum cleaner having a two cyclonic. Uh, a unit of higher successive efficiency. In Dyson's case, there are two. In Hoover's case, it's three, but it's also successive unit, right? So this element was found in the product. Uh, the second one is you have an uh, upper chamber with a cone-shaped part, right? So uh, what happened here is uh, in, in the case of Hoover, uh, they have also uh, they have uh, a cone, a cone-shaped uh, upper chamber. And uh, element C is you have a uh, motor that generates the airflow in the triple vortex. They also have a motor that generates the airflow. And the element D in the patent claims a cylinder, a cylinder uh, container that collect the dust and uh, in triple vortex, there's also a, a something like that in the triple vortex. So the court found that right, uh, there are infringement, the infringement of the uh, product. The the comparison table was done, and it was found that all the elements claimed in the pattern uh, was found in the accused product, and also the additional element claimed in the dependent's claim was also found in the accused product. So therefore, the court uh, decided that there was an infringement uh, of the patent. Okay, so what the court has decided that, okay, there is an infringement because all the elements claimed in the patents are found in the infringing product. And uh, uh, Hoover uh, was ruled to have infringed on the Dyson's patent and damages were awarded against Hoover. And a total of four, four million pounds was uh, uh, paid to Dyson as damages plus the cost uh, uh, the, the dam for the, co the cost for the action. So this is uh, with this uh, uh, winning, uh, Dyson was able to, you know, the patents was validated by the court and Dyson can move on, right, to, to sell this product to the world. Uh, the patent become... Uh, when, when the pattern is validated by the court, it becomes stronger, right? It's not easy to invalidate because it's already uh, deemed uh, judged by the court to be valid and uh, Dyson uh, can uh, use the pattern 
to grow the business. So, uh, so because of the, the case, uh, Dyson was able to sell their product as a premium. If you look at the products, the price of uh, Dyson's product versus the competitor's product, Dyson's always managed to sell at a premium, uh, enjoy the highest margin and dominate the uh, biggest market share and become most profitable company. And patterns play a very important part in this respect. Okay, so uh, the same technology, the same cyclonic technology was extended by Dyson to another vacuum cleaner, the Dyson Stick Vacuum Cleaner. And Dyson Stick Vacuum Cleaner also stand out with, for its powerful suction power, innovative design and uh, ease of use, okay? So uh, uh, the, the uh, vacuum stick vacuum cleaner, the handheld vacuum cleaner uh, is protected by this US pattern, uh, which was filed in 2019, September 10, right? So uh, instead, uh, it features a special cyclonic separating power uh, comprises of a cyclone chamber and inlet ducts, right? The inlet ducts that sucks in the dirty air and the cyclone, uh, uh, cyclonic uh, chamber. And the cyclonic chamber wraps around the inner ducts. It's not only one uh, cyclonic, uh, dual cyclonic chamber. It has a multiple cyclonic chamber uh, wrap around the inlet ducts to help separate the dust and the air. And this particular patent uh, is protected by this particular technology is protected by this patent and by and, and the claim lays out all the elements in the claim. Right? So, so this pattern uh, uh, comprises of a handle and you have the cyclonic uh, separating unit. If you can follow my cursor, this is the uh, handle. Uh, it has the cyclonic uh, uh, separating unit. They also have a cone shape here, uh, cone shape as the upper chamber and the lower chamber where, and, and uh, you have an inlet duct where it sucks in the air and this cyclonic chamber, uh, they are substantially parallel to the inlet, inlet ducts and it surrounds the inlet duct. So instead of one uh, uh, dual chamber, cyclonic chamber, it has multiple cyclonic chamber surrounding uh, the inlet ducts to do a better separation of dust and faster separation of dust. So from the uh, upright vacuum cleaner, uh, uh, Dyson applies the technology onto a, uh, uh, onto a stick vacuum cleaner, okay? And uh, lately, uh, Dyson has also used the cyclonic uh, separation technology to develop a robot autonomous robot vacuum cleaner. Uh, this autonomous robot vacuum cleaner uh, features advanced uh, navigation system using, you know, you have camera reading, doing mapping of the floor, using the dual cyclonic uh, vacuum separation chamber to uh, deliver powerful suction capability and intelligent features to adapt to the various home environment. So, so, so this uh, Dyson 360i uh, combines the cyclonic separation technology uh, with a 660, 600, uh, 360 degree uh, uh, vision system that can do a mapping to provide a detailed wall plan and also to and systematically uh, navigate the robot autonomously around a room to clean your, 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 your home. And the, the basic uh, pattern underlying this uh, 360, uh, 360i, Dyson 360i, is this particular pattern, which was found in uh, year 2003. This US pattern uh, found in December uh, uh, 3, 20, uh, 1999, okay? And uh, what, what does the pattern protect? Uh, the patterns protects a combination of parts again, uh, you have a cast chassis, you have a wheel, you have a drive that drive the wheel and a control mechanism that controls the drive, that controls the wheel. And you have a cleaner head 
uh, having an inlet which is facing the, the surface to be clean and the separating apparatus, uh, which is the cyclonic uh, chamber uh, to separate the da dust from the air, right? So, so this is this combination protected by this uh, robot uh, vacuum cleaner. Okay, so uh, apart from the vacuum cleaner, uh, Dyson has also turned its attention to other application. And one of the application uh, uh, that Dyson has created is that of a uh, Dyson Airblitz hand dryer. Yeah, the Dyson Airblitz hand dryer, uh, uh, you know, the pub before this uh, Dyson Airblitz hand dryer, the public bathroom, uh, if you go to public bathroom, you want to dry your hands, uh, primarily, there are two options. One is you use a paper towel. One is to use the warm air dryer, right? The old style warm air dryer. But this paper towel is not economic, uh, environmentally friendly. You have to throw away the paper. And the warm air dryer also is not very efficient because to evaporate the water from your hands using warm air, uh, not only is uncomfortable, you need a lot of warm air to evaporate water. So to address this problem, Dyson came up with the Dyson Air Blitz uh, uh, hand dryer in October 2006. Uh, the Air Blitz uh, uh, uses uh, high velocity air, blow into your hand to force water off the user's hand. Okay. So how, how does the Dyson uh, Airblitz work? First of all, you have a motor that draw in the air into uh, uh, draw. Uh, you, you, have, uh, you have a filter, HEPA filter to remove uh, bacteria from the air. And that, then the air is propelled by a powerful motor through narrow slot, yeah? Narrow slot uh, uh, at the opening at high speed, 400 miles per hour to create a thin sheet of moving air. The thin sheet of moving air will act as a wiper to force water. Uh, the air, due its velocity, will transfer the momentum to the water and move the water from the hand. Uh, so this Dyson Air Blades offer a faster cleaning and uses less energy compared to a conventional dry uh, hand dryer. So the pattern, uh, this uh, air blades uh, hair dry, uh, hand dryer was protected by this pattern number uh, 7946055. Five. Okay, so this is what the pattern uh, patterns uh, is all about. The claims again, a combination of parts protected uh, for this hand drying apparatus. Uh, it has a front portion. This is a front portion. Sorry. This has a front portion. And the front portion has a slot light opening uh, between uh, opposing slot wall. And this uh, uh, opposing slot wall are made of thermal setting plastic material. And you have a rear portion. A uh, rear portion also have a slot light opening and is, is a sandwich between two opposing slot wall. And this front portion and the rear portion uh, creates a cavity a cavity in between, and this cavity is the opening where you can insert your hand. And you have a fan, a powerful fan, and the powerful fan is in connection uh, with this opening. Uh, then the, the fan generate an airflow and go through this slot and blow into your hand in, in to, into your hand in two different directions. So by pretending this combination of parts, right? Uh, you own this uh, solution to using air, how you produce the air blades to dry hands. And you can uh, uh, use this combination to own this technology through a pattern. So this is a first example, uh, another example of Dyson's uh, innovative product and how Dyson's protect it by way of patterns. Uh, next, Dyson also uh, turned its attention into the into fans, right? The traditional fan fan uses blades, 
So because of the blades, uh, the blades, when it oscillates, it keeps chopping the air. So it creates a non-uniform airflow because of the chopping. And also because of the fan, you need a cage, right, to actually protect the user from touching, from touching the, the blades. And the fan also, because of its wide area, suffer from dust accumulation problem. These are the problem of a conventional air. So Dyson, again, masterfully uh, applied forces of nature using the law of fluid dynamic, right, to solve this problem. Uh, come up with a bladeless air, a bladeless fan, uh, and this bladeless fan totally breaks our stereotype of fan. Because when we talk about fan, we think about blades. But this, this fan doesn't have an external blade. It has a blade inside the motor, but not outside. You don't see a blade. So, so how does it work, right? So this uh, bladeless fan actually uses the fluid dynamics law of inducement and entrainment, inducement and entrainment. Uh, to create an uninterrupted airflow uh, without using the traditional blades. So uh, what happens here is, you know, when the air flows through uh, the slit, right? You have this circular, you have this circular, the air is uh, drawn in through the motor at the base and then it, it flow up, up to, the, to the circular tube, this circular tube. So when the fan flows through the, the slit, the hole, the hole of the circular tube and out through the front of the fan, uh, the, the nozzle, the nozzle of the uh, tube has this aerofoil shape. So when you have the aerofoil shape, uh, you, you know, it like, you know, you have the Bittoni principle when, when air has to travel through a curved surface, then it travel faster and it create a lower pressure. So when the air, uh, move through, move out from this uh, slit uh, uh, through this uh, Bertuna principle, it creates a low negative pressure. And because of the negative pressure, the air from the back will quickly get sucked in, accelerated in to fill in, to normalize the pressure. So you enhance the airflow first time uh, using this uh, uh, inducement. This is called inducement. You draw, you draw in the air through the negative pressure. And when, as the breeze go along, uh, it also pull in the air uh, from surrounding the fan. And this is called entrainment. So this combination of inducement and entrainment, which is a known principle of uh, fluid uh, fluids mechanics, by combining these two, uh, Dyson is managed to increase the airflow for more than 15 times. The air that goes in compared to the air that out, goes out is 15 times bigger. So Dyson trademarked this technology, named this technology as air multiplier and trademarked the name. And the, the patterns behind this uh, 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 business fan uh, is uh, this particular pattern, uh, which was found in year 2009 uh, by Dyson Technology. And and this is what this bladeless fan is about, right? This bladeless fan is protected by this combination. Uh, this combination of uh, uh, you have a nozzle, a nozzle. This is whole core nozzle sitting on a base, and uh, you have a device creating the airflow to suck in the air to off, to to create the airflow to the nozzle. Uh, the the nozzle has an interior passage, yeah, it has an interior, inside you have an interior passage, and it has a mouth through which the airflow is emitted. And the nozzle, uh, it extends about an exit X uh, to create an opening from which air from outside the fan will draw, will draw through the fan, right? will draw through the, the, uh, the, the nozzle. And more, most importantly, the nozzle has got this aerofoil uh, shape that uh, allows a negative pressure to be created. So it is defined in the claim, the nozzle uh, comprising a surface uh, that directs the airflow 
and it comprises as a, a diffuser portion, a guide portion. This is a diffuser portion, a guide portion. This is a guide portion and also a debris portion. A combination of this shape allows the airflow to uh, create a negative pressure zone to draw in the air from behind the fan to accelerate the airflow in the inducement process and further an, uh, acceleration happens when the air from surrounding is pulled to the air, to the breeze uh, in the uh, entrapment process. So this is how uh, uh, this is uh, protected, uh, how, how this lidless fan is protected and how this pattern, this combination of features protect this fan. And Dyson extended the air multiplier principle used in the bladeless fan to a hairdryer and introduced the Dyson supersonic hairdryer in year 2015, right? In this uh, uh, hair, supersonic hairdryer, again, it's the same principle. Uh, you, you have a motor, right? This is a digital, small digital motor that you can place on the handle. You draw the air up uh, and go out through the circular aperture is in the circular form and create a negative uh, pressure to induce the air from behind to fill in the negative pressure. And when you when the air move to the front, the air surrounding it is entrained and create a bigger airflow. Yeah, so this is how uh, this uh, and inducement and entrainment is used to speed up to multiply airflow in a hair dryer, uh, which is called a supersonic air dryer. Yeah, so so this uh, uh, supersonic air dryer is protected by this particular pattern found in twenty thirteen. Right, you can read about this in the handbook. Uh, again, is using uh, the the law of good mechanics to enhance the airflow. And uh, the claims uh, actually uh, summarizes the various part put together to enable this uh, airflow to be enhanced. Yeah, if you can follow my cursor, you know, you have the airflow uh, coming from behind, the one airflow from, okay. First of all, you have a motor at the bottom, generate air that goes to the, uh, to the circular apertures, you have the inner wall, outer wall, and there's a circular aperture. And this circular aperture has an aerofoil surface, uh, create a negative pressure. So when this negative pressure is created, air from behind flows through, is induced to flow through together, accelerate the airflow. And as the air goes out from the opening, more surrounding air are drawn in through the entrainment process to increase the velocity of the air and make it a stronger and more powerful airflow. So this is again, a extension of the air blitz technology in the airflow. And, and again, uh, uh, the, the, this product has become very popular uh, to the Dyson's uh, fans. Uh, with the time uh, left, I would like to share the last technology, uh, the last, last iconic product by Dyson, which is the Dyson Air Wrap Hair Styler. Right? This Dyson uh, Air Wrap Hair Styler introduced in 2018 uh, has captivated the beauty industry uh, with its very unique uh, approach to hair styling. The traditional hair styling used a uh, hot curling iron. Uh, and this hot curling iron are quite risky. Sometimes it can be so hot that it burns your hair, right? So it's not a good solution. So what Dyson has done is, Dyson again turned to the law of nature using a aerodynamic phenomena called the Konda effect, right? What is Konda effect? Okay, Konda effect is... Uh, when the air the the the, uh, the air flows, it has a tendency of the air to get attached to a concave a convex surface. The air will always uh, draw get drawn to a convex surface, 
and uh, so what what the uh, uh, Arab is doing is uh, using this conda effect to using high velocity of jets of air to wrap the air your hair around a barrel and uh, you don't need to use very high extreme speed uh, extreme heat you don't need to use very hot heat you know to curl, to to style your hair uh, using the high velocity of uh, uh, air and uh, it features a powerful motor that generates a lot of uh, airflow uh, precise temperature control and you can use various attachment uh, to attach to, to do the various, to meet your various piling needs. Uh, needs. Uh, okay, so uh, what happened here is this pattern is uh, protected uh, by this uh, pattern, uh, which was filed in 2021. And uh, what Konda, this uh, air wrap product uses Konda effect. Yeah, to curve the air, to attract your hair to the attachment. And using that, right, you can allow for more control and, and uh, during when you do styling, and it's not hot, so you can easily manipulate the uh, attachment and there's no heat damage. So uh, how is this technology protected? It's protected by this particular pattern and this is the claim protecting the technology. So this claim described uh, the key essential element of this air wrap. Uh, uh, you have the airflow unit 40 that generates the air. You have the heating unit that does the, does the heating and you have the controlling unit that controls the airflow and also the heat. And you can have in different mode, uh, different kind of mode. And this different kind of mode, you have uh, different uh, heat and different airflow and uh, the airflow also control the transition right so this uh, air styling appliances can work with different attachment to meet your different uh, styling needs okay so with, with that i come to the end of my presentation today i really apologize someone you know uh, throw on my screen and then create some uh, you know distortion but because I don't want to be distracted, I just continue along. I hope uh, you know uh, in the future we will control better. Uh, so what happened in Dyson's case is uh, Dyson, due to its innovation, due to its uh, 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 very indigenous way of solving problem, uh, Dyson managed to grow uh, from a startup in 1991 to a world class electrical appliances manufacturers uh, today. Uh, it has uh, worldwide presence. It has more than 8,500 uh, employees worldwide. Uh, in 2003, you can see the revenue of Dyson growing. And in 2003, it reached uh, 7.1 billion pounds with a profit of 1.4 billion pounds. Until today, Dyson is still a privately owned company, 100% owned by James Dyson's family, uh, with an estimated net worth of 23, sorry, 23 billion dollar. Uh, it is a remarkable, it's an inspiring, wreck to riches story of an inventor managed to create a, a, a world class company based purely on innovation and also using pattern. Uh, in uh, in the quest for success. So I hope uh, you can draw some lesson from today's sharing. Yeah.